In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I'm doing a new sermon series on Paul's letter to the Galatians, and a good place to start is a conversation that I had with a, a young man who doesn't believe that there's a whole lot of history in the Gospels. He's kind of a, a progressive Christian who's done a lot of uh, scholarly work, and so he's come to know that Paul, for example, doesn't uh, mention the virgin birth, doesn't mention uh, Jesus's miracles, has a different understanding of the resurrection and then a kind of empty tune physical resurrection of Jesus from the grave, and uh, that a lot of the stuff in the Gospels is just kind of made up. Um, I let him know that he was wrong about uh, Paul and, and resurrection, that Paul didn't believe in just a kind of spiritual resurrection, that Jesus just kind of, his soul appeared to the disciples, and this convinced them to keep proclaiming Jesus as Messiah, uh, that Paul, in fact, uh, corrected the Corinthians who were thinking something similar like that. The Corinthians were Greeks who believed in uh, the soul, the immortality of the soul, and so it would have been, wouldn't have been difficult for them to believe that Jesus had, you know, risen, his soul had risen, and that he had uh, appeared to the disciples as a kind of spirit or ghost. And, and Paul says, no, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And that word resurrection in both the Hebrew and the Greek, both the Jewish understanding of it and the Greek understanding of it, was an actual coming back to life. Uh, from the dead. And, and Paul's clear about this in, in his correcting the Corinthians, and you can check that out in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, the next thing that I want to talk to him about is why Paul does not mention um, Jesus's teachings, his life. He, he has so much in line with the teachings of Jesus, but he doesn't, uh, he doesn't talk about Jesus's life. And, and we see, I think, a hint as to why in Paul's opening uh, to his letter to the Galatians. And so I'm going to be reading now from chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. Let's listen for God's word to us. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Jesus Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaimed to you before, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, let that one be accursed. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin, for I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it but I received it through the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul's clear that uh, the gospel that he received was not something that he heard from, from others. He had clearly heard about the gospel and probably knew some things about it because he was a persecutor of the early church. But it wasn't like he was you know, persecuting Peter and James and John and Andrew uh, and as he was persecuting them in prison or something like that, that they uh, convinced him of the truth of the gospel. Paul says no. Paul, in fact, was far away from Israel. He was up in Tarsus in modern-day Turkey. Uh, and so Paul um, is saying to us that, that the gospel that he received um, doesn't have any human origin, other than the human being Jesus, but it was received from him by way of uh, revelation uh, from Jesus himself. And the words that he used, uh, that Jesus appeared to him just as he appeared to the disciples. And so Paul's saying, I had the same sort of resurrection experience of Jesus as uh, the 12 disciples. And he says 500 others did at one time as well. And so this is, I think, um, one of the reasons Paul doesn't talk about Jesus's life and, and uh, his miracles. And, and that's because the experience that he had was so powerful of the risen Jesus. And what Jesus was teaching to him was so um, 
poignant and clear, and it seems Jesus was clear with him that this is what you are to share with the world, uh, and that was essentially Christ crucified. The Messiah of God was crucified and risen from the grave, and the meaning, all of the meaning and the power associated with that, that was the gospel Paul received. And Paul's experience of this, of the risen Jesus, was so powerful, and Jesus' instructions so clear that he left um, the, the development of the Gospels, uh, stories about Jesus' life and his miracles, he left that to those who knew him in person and those who were the ones sharing remembrances of this. And that's why Paul doesn't talk about that stuff so much. Um, and Paul gets right to the heart of, of uh, the Gospel um, in the opening of his letter to the Galatians. He says this, Jesus gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I was brought back to uh, a time at a friend's house when I was in college doing something I shouldn't have been doing. We all were. Um, but my friend's family was Catholic, and they had some Catholic artwork uh, up in the house, and I was kind of meditating upon a crucifixion scene, and all of a sudden it hit me that Christianity did a kind of great reversal with the idea of sacrifice. And I talked to my friends about that. I said, it's pretty cool that Christianity reverses sacrifices, that instead of humans being sacrificed for the sake of pleasing the gods, God actually sacrifices himself for the sake of bringing happiness and pleasure and joy and satisfaction to the world. And, and that kind of uh, blew our minds for a little while. And it still blows my mind to this day. 